Good evening, everyone. Um, Tom Engelhardt wants us uh, to consider some numbers. And Tom Engelhardt is um, the uh, Nation Institute's uh, TomDispatch.com vlogger. And um, he's pretty well known. And um, he wants us to consider the following list. Some of it is pretty staggering. 536 billion is the number of dollars the Pentagon is requesting for the 2009 military budget. This represents an increase of almost 70% over the Pentagon's 2001 budget of 316 billion. And that's without factoring in supplementary requests to fund wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as the President's global war on terror. Add to those soaring sums, and military spending has more than doubled in the Bush era. According to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, since 2001, funding for defense and related programs has jumped at an annual average rate of 8%, four times faster than the average rate of growth for Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, which represented 2%, <coughs> and uh, 27 times faster than the average rate of growth for um, domestic discretionary programs. So the next time you hear any of your representatives in Congress talking about fiscal responsibility, you may want to quote those figures to them. 1,390,000, the number of subprime foreclosures over the next two years as estimated by Credit Suisse analysts. They also predict that by the end of 2012, 12.7% of all residential borrowers may be out of their homes as part of the housing crisis that has caught the Bush administration totally off guard. 1 million, the number of missions or sorties, the US Air Force, the US Air Force probably claims to have flown in the global war on terror since 9-11. More than one-third of them, um, about 353,000, in what is still uh, called Operation Iraqi Freedom. And this is a good measure of where American energies and oil purchases have gone these last few years. 509,000, the number of names found in 2007 on a terrorist watch list compiled by the FBI. No longer in Bush's America is a 10 most wanted list adequate. According to ABC News, lawmakers and their spouses have even been detained because their names were on the watch list. And Saddam Hussein was on that list even when he was in US custody. By February 2008, According to the American Civil Liberties Union, the names on the same FBI list has ballooned to 900,000. That's almost a million. And uh, it is increasing, by the way, by 20,000 names per month. 300,000, the number of American troops who now suffer from major depression and post-traumatic stress, according to a recent RAND study. The depression and PS, uh, PTSD alone, it has been reported, will cost the nation as much as $6.2 billion in the two years following deployment. That, of course, is if these people are not committing suicide before that money reaches them, or if it reaches them at all. 51,000, the number of post-surge Iraqi prisoners held in American and Iraqi jails at the end of 2007. 
in that country, the U.S. now runs perhaps the world's largest extrajudicial internment camp, Camp Buka, whose holding capacity even now is being expanded by 20,000, by uh, being expanded from 20,000 to 30,000 prisoners. Many of these prisoners were simply swept up in surge raids and have been held without charges or access to lawyers or courts uh, ever since. Add in the prisoners in unknown numbers in our sizable network of prisons in Afghanistan and at Guantanamo, and in our various offshore and borrowed prisons, uh, and add in as well the widespread mistreatment of uh, prisoners at American hands, and you have the machinery for the manufacture of vast numbers of angry potential enemies, some undoubtedly willing to commit almost any act of revenge. Think of all this as an enormous dystopian experiment in social networking, is what Tom Engelhardt calls it, the Facebook from hell without the Internet. 5,700, the number of trailers still in New Orleans issued by FEMA as temporary housing after Hurricane Katrina. And this is uh, still, these trailers are still being occupied by uh, the occupants who lost their homes uh, in that storm almost three years ago. 658, the number of suicide bombings worldwide last year including 542 in Afghanistan and Iraq, more than double the number in any of the past 25 years. It goes on. 511, the number of applicants uh, convicted of felony crimes, including burglary, grand larceny, and aggravated assault, who were accepted into the U.S. Army in 2007, more than double the 249 in 2006 due to the dire problems with recruitment. 126, the number of dollars it took to buy a barrel of crude oil in the international market this week. <clears throat> Actually, Tom is wrong. It's just jumped to $127. 82, uh, the percent of, um, of Americans who think that this country has pretty much seriously gotten off uh, the right uh, track. And a 40% uh, percent loss on trade weighted value, uh, basis in the value of the dollar since 2001. The dollar share of total world foreign exchange reserves has also dropped from 73% to 64%, and this is pretty serious. 37, the number of countries that have experienced food protests and riots in recent months due to soaring food prices. <clears throat> and I might like to add from some other sources that six, at least 600,000 Iraqis have been slaughtered since the beginning of the war. The war dead Americans, uh, the service men and women over there who have lost their lives, uh, who are officially counted in those numbers, is now at 4,079. And the cost of the war, as of uh, right now, according to nationalpriorities.org, is 521 billion and counting, that amounts to $1,721 per person, so if you thought you got a refund, um, think again, and uh, basically 341 million spent per day on war. I know figures are boring, but... Um, Write them down so you can quote them to your representatives when um, the next uh, time somebody says to you, we can't provide uh, anything for domestic spending anymore. Good night.